Today's date is November 11, 2022, and there are zero new cases of COVID-19 in the Charlotte area. So starting off, do you want to just introduce yourself? Yes, I'm David D. Dawson. Um, where are you from? Born and raised uh, on the south side of Chicago and currently in Charlotte, North Carolina. How did you find yourself coming to Charlotte? Uh, I always say long story short. My oldest sister uh, went to Johnson C. Smith in the uh, mid eight or early to mid eighties, and as a little kid, I just fell in love with Charlotte. It was different than Chicago, the streets of Chicago. And when I came back in 1988, summer of 1988, uh, 88, uh, I was just made the decision I want to come back and live. Uh, it didn't happen for my high school years, but I was able to come back for my college years and attended and graduated from Winston-Salem State University. Um, so you said you, when did you move to Charlotte then? What year did you? The exact year I actually moved to Charlotte was probably 1990, I want to say 1998-ish, okay. something right. like that, 1998. So how did you get from Winston-Salem State to Queens? Uh, that's a longer story. <laughs> okay, so, okay, rephrase the question. What attracted you to working at Queens then? Uh, to be honest with you, I, I had gotten, uh, my original pathway was through uh, a mentor of mine who suggested me to teach uh, a communications class. And that was right up my alley previously working in public relations. It was the sports, sports PR class. So he suggested me, and that was my first entryway to working at Queens. Uh, in the role that I'm in now, I had another mentor, actually at the, from, the, from the university, had encouraged me to apply for the sport management uh, position here. Uh, as I was working in Charlotte Mecklenburg schools as a sport marketing teacher. So I applied, interviewed, and in my second year. Do you enjoy teaching? Love teaching. Why? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> uh, I enjoy seeing the sometimes instant light bulb, as most people would say, of students grasping an, uh, a, a theory or a concept and applying it. And it just so happens that, that I always believe that it's been my, the purpose that God has given me to do now in this part of my life. Um, and there's a big difference between purpose and assignment. So my purpose, I believe, is to educate based off of my experiences working in the sport management and communications industries. But my assignments may change. So it keeps pushing me every day to fulfill that purpose, to, to enlighten to students and just the way you know, my professors and teachers did for me. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel like the pandemic made that harder for you when we went online? A little. Uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, I was still teaching high school. Okay. And it was challenging. <laughs> it was very challenging, especially the first few weeks uh, in, 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 I think it was mid-March of 2020, when everything halted. And you saw the, uh, you know, the digital divide, the, those who had, dig, you know, Wi-Fi and the Chromebooks and stuff like that. Uh, you saw the difficulty and the challenges of that. Personally, it was fun for me <laughs> as a teacher because I was, I was a little bit more relaxed. Uh, the stress of the job was a little bit, uh, it, it, it was not there for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it was also, you know, painful to see what, what students may be going through or, and things like that. Um, what do you remember of those early days? Uh, just confusion, not knowing how to do or what to do a little bit at first. Uh, we had to transition everything onto 
the uh, educational platform Canvas, mm -hmm. which I had a little bit of training and you know, working knowledge of, but uh, it was it was a it was a big transition. Uh, the biggest thing too was that everything for us was if a student turned in something or they halfway did it, you can only go but give them. You couldn't really fail them. You couldn't really fail the kids, and that was a big adjustment for for myself and. and some colleagues. Do you feel like when you're teaching, do you get close to your students, or? Oh yes. So I mean, you mentioned earlier that you felt like you haven't, you weren't really able to be there for your students mm -hmm. in terms of when they were going through stuff. Mm -hmm. How do you think that affected you personally, like not being able to teach the way you wanted to? It was it was a little restraining mm -hmm. because I'm very theatrical or dramatic when I teach, but at the same time. Being in the communications area, I kind of just used that Zoom because mm -hmm. I did about 15 to 20 minutes worth of lecturing. Really, you know, especially those early days, I just use it as my time to, hey, this is the David D. Dawson show. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> We're gonna have some fun while learning, mm -hmm. and you know, I just kind of reverted back to my childhood watching Mr. Rogers or. Uh, something like that where let me entertain and educate at the same time uh, I wished I, one of the biggest things I wished was that more students had turned on their cameras mm -hmm. but at the same token you have to empathize they may not have been in a place where they wanted to see you wanted to see that background mm -hmm. Where uh, you know they, they could have been living in a hotel or something like that. It was it was hard, mm -hmm. so that was the challenging part. Do you feel like the theatrical type of teaching like came with you after the pandemic ended? Like, do you think that it's something you kept? Oh, that's just me. <laughs> that's just me. <laughs> I'm a. I should have worked down. I'm a. I'm a thespian as well. <laughs> I love to act, so I love to entertain mm -hmm. at the same time. I got you. Um. So going to something different, how do you feel like your friendships and family relationships changed during the pandemic? Um, the, the family and friendship dynamics was interesting during that time. Uh, I was going through a divorce, so you can imagine family structure or family dynamics as being shaken. Mm -hmm. My friends, and I was also going through, um, I was going through alcoholism. So my friends, my closest friends that I spent a lot of time with or I've known over the years were extremely supportive and extremely um, helpful during a, a, a very, very difficult time. So not only are we going through a pandemic, um, I'm getting a divorce and I'm going through, uh, and I'm, I'm being treated for alcoholism. So it, it was tough, but it was, and weird all at the same time. Is that your first time dealing with alcoholism or being treated for it? It was my first time for myself to face it, accept it, and to find the solution for it, yes. And do you think it was a coincidence it took place during the pandemic, or the pandemic made you face those things? I think the, uh, I think the pan, I think it was a little bit of both. I think it was a combination of everything. But uh, definitely the the pandemic slowed things down to recognize that uh, of of those issues. Um, and recognize well, that might be me. Recognize, um, recognize that uh, yeah, there's some there's some things that need to be addressed that would not have been addressed had things just been the way it had, had always been before the pandemic. I got you. And then, how long were you and your wife married for? Uh, at that point, well, five years total. Five years. Gotcha. Um, did the pandemic cause strain on that relationship as well to get divorced, or was that just? No, I don't. I, I'm sure it did. There were some parts to it that, of course, had done. Uh, uh, but uh, it was uh, it was already there prior to the pandemic. So 
uh, it, there were some things that it, it put more strain, more stress, and then sometimes some, some things because of the, again, being the fact that things paused um, and life just kind of just paused a little bit as far as the everyday normal life paused, it allowed things to slow down uh, and to to take a breath and take a take a good look at things. Um, with the pandemic as well, like you said, your friends were a large supporter for you. Mm-hmm. Um, how did the pandemic affect those relationships? For some, it made us cl- it just made us closer a little bit. I think because we so some pe- some some friends. Uh, we never stopped seeing each other <laughs> during the pandemic. We we did this. We did the distancing, and <laughs> but we kept going, Jack. We kept we. It, it was really interesting. Like we 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 did the social distancing, the six feet, and and spread around and everything like that. But. It just, I think that kind of helped us and made us closer. Mm-hmm. Some people I, who I hadn't seen in a while, we were able to reconnect. Uh, or, you know, the people that you, you probably don't talk, but they're, they're still your, your closest friends from the past or something like that. That allowed us to kind of reconnect, I guess, in some, some instances. Mm-hmm. Um, are, do all of your friends live in the Charlotte area or were there some... Outside of it? College friends outside, uh, except for maybe one or two college friends. Uh, everybody else were, were here in Charlotte or in the Charlotte area, yes. I got you. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, what are some long-lasting consequences you think of the pandemic for yourself, or just in general? Long-term. Like, just let's go with less, like lessons. What have you learned from the pandemic? Man, I learned a lot. Uh, some of the lessons I learned. I, well, I, I will say, I guess what I and I kind of what you you asked me about gaining. Um, I learned a lot about myself that I didn't know, or things that had had been affecting me in the past was still affecting me in my present, and I learned how to get that out. Do you have an example? Uh, yeah, well, let's just say, let's say, um, I'll give you one example where I was able to learn how to kind of deal with a hurt or a past situation. Uh, a lot of teachers in this country, and definitely in Charlotte-Mecklenburg schools, we were, uh, I don't know, man, we were kind of drugged through the mud through from politicians and everything about all different kinds of stuff. I remember one local politician called teachers thugs because they were standing up for more pay. And that 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 just, it, it ate at me. I, and I never let it go. And I had to learn the lesson uh, during the pandemic of how to let that type of anger and that type of hurt, how to let it go, how to process of letting go. For, for me, I learned to, to pray a certain way to help me get that out because that stuck with me for a long time. And I didn't realize what that was doing to me internally. Mm-hmm. So that's something that... Uh, that I learned how to do. Uh, so doing a lot of self-reflection reflection, and how to really get to the solutions to a lot of stuff. And again, that, that kind of goes back to it, the, because we couldn't do anything, couldn't go anywhere pr- pretty much, it slowed that process down where you can actually think about stuff and do the reflections instead of go, 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 go. Mm-hmm. So... 
Um, on your hand as well, you mention um, like religion a lot and just like God. Is that a big part of your life? Yes. Do you think the pandemic made that a, like closer? Do you feel like you felt closer to God after that? Yes. Uh, you know. <laughs> You, you you have a mo you have a situation or a, yeah you may have a situation an issue that kind of comes to head where you you have to it, it just meets it I, w I would say where God met me mm -hmm. <laughs> in this situation this is you have nowhere else to go but to to to, to whoever you may have as a uh, as a uh, entity or so or such for me you know again God so. <laughs> I had nowhere else to go. And because of that, it allowed me to reconnect where I was disconnected. And uh, that was instrumental. That was, that was extremely key. Do you mind telling me the situation that you were in with that? Um, I couldn't tell you the situation, but I could just say that I, I could tell you that it was a situation I was in that I had never been in before. Um, and it just, it was, uh, you know, some people may, you know, it was like a burning bush moment for me where I could, I could see, hey, you need to, you need to do this. You, you, you know, I had to get some help. Mm -hmm. And um, getting that help led me to reconnect um, with God. And uh, and that was and that's based off of my toolage of God. <laughs> I was like, yeah, this, that that sounds like about right. That sounds like what he would do, you know. Mm -hmm. So did you grow up religious or did you recently find that for yourself? Um, so I grew up Catholic. Okay. I grew up in the Catholic Church. Um, so I wouldn't say true, I mean, you know, really religious, but I did go through uh, the Catholic Church from, <laughs> from, from kindergarten to 12th grade, uh, and I left the Catholic Church uh, during, when I got to college and I started doing, I started doing um, just more spiritual things. Uh, being in the South, you, and being African American, most likely you're probably going to go to a Baptist church, at least it's within um, the Christian faith. Mm -hmm. So that, that's pretty much that. Got you. Um, do you still attend church regularly? <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> Define attend. <Okay. laughs> no, I, I, uh, I have not. I've only been back physically to my church. Uh, here in Charlotte twice, but I do participate online, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, because of the pandemic. And, uh, and there, there is something to say to be in physical church and versus being, on, you know, watching it from online, but I, uh, I'm still connected. So. Before the pandemic, did you go to church in person? Or? Yes. Do you think... Forcing it online, do you, did you like that experience, or did you feel like it was like what was the effect of going online for you? Not much, because I was kind of we we had the technology prior, so sometimes I would already oh. if I was lazy and didn't want to drive, you know, if I didn't want to do it. But I think the biggest thing, like I said, I was physically going to church before the pandemic. My spirit wasn't there though, and that made the difference. Going through what I had to go through during the pandemic, my spirit, like I say, even if I'm, if I go now, my spirit is my spirit is there where it, my spirit wasn't there, um, and and again, that's that's the big difference of reconnecting spiritually with with my uh, what I would say higher power. That's, I it's really inspirational. <laughs> Thank oh, you. You're, no, you're welcome. Um, what do you think your future looks like? Oh, I have no clue. I have no clue. I don't even want to guess. Whatever God wants, that that's what my future is. Whatever God wants, uh, um, whatever His will is. Uh, to be quite honest with you, uh, 
yeah, whatever, whatever God's will is, that's what my future is. And I don't try to think about it too much. Uh, I really, again, one of the things that the lessons that I learned from the pandemic was stay in the moment, stay, do what I need to do today. Past is in the, the past is in the past and the future, you know, I can't do anything about certain things and just to control what I can control. And, uh, and knowing that difference of what I can and what I cannot control and uh, let the future take care of itself. Are there any additional things you'd want to say about your experiences or just something you want to tell people? Uh, again, uh, the, big th the big takeaway for me was, you know, uh, do self-reflections every day if you can, uh, to know a little bit more about yourself uh, and what you, what you desire is was is something that I still you know still have to do. I had to take into account every day of do I need to apologize to somebody? Did I do something correctly or incorrectly? What changes things I need to change every day? Self reflection every day. Um, if someone has a substance abuse uh, problem. Uh, you, you know, try to get help, but nobody can force it on you. You have to seek it for yourself. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you think or feel that you may have a problem, the inkling of a problem, go find out if you do um, uh, through various programs that are out there to help. Um, do you feel like going through your substance abuse and that journey do you think you would be more inclined to help others i have to help others yeah, yeah. Have, have you before? i have uh i have and i still do uh and uh yeah th that's that's the price is to help others um as much as as much as i can uh when i can and uh so and that's that's the goal I hope to, you know, continue doing every day you know, throughout the rest of my life is to help those and and um, help hopefully, you know, just keep passing it on. Do you think that pairs well with teaching, like the lessons you can help others with substance abuse, like in turn? Yes, because it, it allows me to, it just gives me a different lens than I had before. Um, what do you mean? You take a different viewpoint of relationships. Uh, and the best teachers, uh, you know, build and maintain relationships with their students um, or a good rapport, a positive rapport. And if you can, um, if you learn things about yourself through substance abuse, uh, you get that empathy of what they're going through. Uh, it's just a different lens. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's a different lens. No, I, I think I can, I think I understand what you're saying. Mm. Um, do you have an example, perhaps, I can help better explain? Mm. I would say maybe, and this is not for everybody, this is just, again, lessons that I, I learned how to do. If I'm probably having, if a student is doing something, or, or heck, anybody um, is doing something that affects me, and if I can slow it down a moment or two, and I have to look inward and say, what is this person doing affecting me? Is it affecting my self-esteem? Is it affecting my ego? You know, what part of self is being affected? And maybe, and how am I playing a role in this? You know, because for every action, there's a reaction. So, 
if the student may be coming at me or if they're, you know, in, in a, an aggressive manner or tone or something like that, or it may, maybe I didn't do anything wrong, but maybe it's something I can say, hey, what is it being tolerant and compassionate with that student? Hey, what's wrong? What's going on? How can I help? Um, but at the same time, again, doing the self-reflection, what did I do to set this in motion? Did I say something? Did I do something? And sometimes you may find out it might have been one little thing that that could have set it off. And then you have to, you may have to um, apologize and make some type of um, amends to it as much as possible. So. Sounds like a role is really important to you, like, or just like having a purpose. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like the pandemic enlightened that purpose, or like, how do you think like just moving forward? How is that going to change for you? Um, I guess going through that time period, it did make me be able to articulate some things that are important. Values. What values are more important to me than others? It was one thing to kind of to know it, and then there's another thing to be able to articulate it better to yourself and to others. And that was one of the things that kind of came out. I was able to articulate my values and some of the things that, uh, so like Rose, as you was asking, uh, is kind of dependent on, you know, those values. The sense of purpose and having that purpose drives me based off on those values. So I value relationships. I value, uh, I guess the the healthy the health of the relationship, and do we have a common goal and common vision or a purpose to do you know what we what we're working with, and if they're if they're at odds, you know there there's there's complications. So I try to find those yeah that sense of purpose and the role. Um, and yeah, again, just is, is there anything else you'd like to say? No, uh, I got my sanity back. That, that was, yeah. I got the sanity back. That was that was good. I'm happy for you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.